Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to do a oil pump inspection and clearance check. So I'm building an engine and this is a brand new pump supplied to me with a cam. And as part of every engine build, I need to absolutely go through every single one of these pumps and check and verify before I use them because if the clearances on these pumps are out of spec, then you'll have oil pressure issues and oil volume flow problems. So what I'm going to do today is basically unpackage this and then disassemble it and check for any issues. Um, it is an AP pump, but uh, one of the problems I always run into is flashing issues with the casting. And um, like I said, I have had issues with the clearances in the rotor arms and things like that. So what you want to make sure you check your parts before you use them. And I'm going to be using a uh, set of feeler blades and my dial indicator to do the measurements. So it doesn't take a lot of equipment to do this, but absolutely must happen before you use the pump if you want good performance. So as I've mentioned, there's usually a bit of flash um, hiding inside these corners. You can see a little bit right there and along there. Now, I don't know if this is actually going to come off during use, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a file and knock down um, that little bit of flashing in there you can see right there that shiny little little line is the, uh, the casting flash. I don't want any of this to come off because um, it'll just go into the uh, into the engine so um, yeah I'm just gonna take this off and take that out but that's one place that I have issues with. Now once I've got it apart I also want to check to make sure that this surface is flat. I do see there are some small um, nicks and scratches so this pump has been somewhat um, roughly handled so there are some nicks and burrs I, I do want to make sure there's no um, burrs on the surface but we'll get to that in a minute but for now I just need to take this cover off and um, start checking clearances with the cover removed we can have a look at the pump and the rotor now one of the things that I always seem to run into is just a little bit of minor grit you might be able to see that there but if I wipe it off with my finger you see that clean spot my fingers left there's a just a light amount of of residue in here so I need to get that that cleaned off um, I always want to make sure there's no burrs along these rotors so I might dress this surfaces up just a little bit to make sure they're nice and clean uh, same thing with this ring I always want to make sure that there's no sharp burrs along any of these edges because they'll just scratch the uh, casing and cause damage. Um, also in here, you can see there's like a powdery... I don't know what this is, but I don't want it in there because I want to actually pre-lubricate the pump before I put it on the engine, so I need to wash all this, whatever this is, off. Um, furthermore, the pump casing itself... Um, just looking in here, there's a little bit of grit I can see down, down in this ring. Uh, it's pretty hard to see on camera, but there is some some minor grit in here. So I'll just go in here and knock off all the uh, all these edges. Just break all the edges. Make sure there's no sharp edges on here. And then I want to make sure that this surface is truly flat. Uh, once again, I see a few little nicks and scratches. So I'm going to go ahead and um, use my flattening stone here and some nice uh, um, fine wet sanding paper to just check the surfaces of this and. Um, on the back side here, I'm going to run a file just across the back edge, check for any high spots as well. But that's that's the kind of the process that you have to go through um, before you even bother checking the clearances. You want to make sure that there's no burrs interfering with your um, measurements and causing you to, to misread uh, the clearances. So let me get this washed and we'll um, start deburring. So here I'm using just a small double-edged uh, file, flat file, and I'm just coming along here and making sure that there are no burrs or any uh, kinds of ridges that might be interfering with any of my measurements. And again, I'm just using very light pressure. All I'm doing is checking for any um, potential places that might have been um, badly machined or something like that. So um, I'm not. my goal is not to remove material here, just check for any kind of burrs or scratches. That's it. And I'm going to do the same process on uh, the flip side. So this side, and then I'll go ahead and move on to the uh, housing and deflashing the housing. Here's the outer rotor ring. And again, just coming in here, just making sure that there are no, no burrs anywhere along here. Because once again, 
the way you get performance is by checking and measuring. So we have to do it to every single part. And if you don't do this, you could potentially have a bit of a burr break off during use and migrate its way into the engine. So we don't want that to happen. Yes, I know there's an oil filter afterwards, but the less grit and debris that goes to the pump, the longer the pump lasts, the longer you have uh, good oil pressure and just maintain better health of the engine. So um, and once again, this part is double-sided. So just, just lightly checking for any, any problems. So I ran into a little spot here. Um, you can see in the reflection that it's just a slightly coarser spot, probably just scratched during the machining process. You can even see some small scratches running uh, lengthwise in the reflection here. So the file will just catch, and that's how you know you found a little spot to deburr. Um, so I'll just dress this off and make it go away. So moving on to this main housing, uh, same process. Just come in here, knock down any potential burrs that are along any of these ridges. And again, it's just a light process. I'm not trying to do a serious uh, metal removal, just, just a light burr removal. That's it. And then once I've done all the burrs, I'm going to come in here and work on work on this flesh. Now I do need to use a more aggressive technique and file to take out uh, this flash, but uh, the process is the same. Just go at it slowly with the file until it's it's gone. One other area I like to do is just the perimeter here. Um, this lid only seals against the housing just from the sheer uh, surface finish. So I want to make sure there are no burrs in here so there are no, no oil leaks past um, the lid to housing uh, interface. And then I will run this lightly across a set of uh, 600 grit uh, sanding paper on this stone just to make sure that, again, no more burrs. I did already find a burr here. It looks like a tool or a pry or something was used to, to bend it here. So this is a little burr that I had to take off. So I've got all the parts deburred. Um, I haven't finished cleaning them yet because I want to take them to this stone and just double check the surface finishes on all of them. So. We'll start with this uh, outer rotor, and again, it's just a light, it's just a light touch. Just make sure that all of the burrs and whatnot are are gone. Um, it'll also give you a way of checking to make sure that the surface finish is nice. Now, this finish is really nice, so I'm not seeing any problems. It's a more manufactured part, machined part, so I'm not expecting any. But again, you never know if someone dropped one at the factory or or something so it's always good to just check um, but this one looks good so I'll go ahead and do the rest of the parts again checking this rotor surface um, you know looks great you can see a minor minor bit of ghosting in there from where it gets assembled but otherwise it's fine um, I do the lid as well, even though this is a ground surface, um, because I have to come in here with the, the file to clean up this edge, and I use a countersunk um, bit to clean up the holes. I'm just going to go um, perpendicular to the grinding marks, just in case I, I do run into any high spots um, with the lid. So I've just taken a few passes, and you can see the pattern that's developing. So clearly there's a low spot in these darker areas and high spots in these um, shiny areas. And this is what I'm saying, just minor tolerances in manufacturing are causing um, minor issues. So when I put this back together, I am gonna put a very thin bead of sealant around the perimeter, just to make sure that nothing leaks um, from this top. But this is what I mean by checking all the parts. You never know what you're gonna find. Um, even though it looked nice from the outside surface finish, uh, clearly you can see that there are high spots and low spots. Now, whether this actually has an effect on the pump, maybe, maybe not, but it's always worth double checking. And finally, the top. Um, the only surface I can do on the sandpaper is this. On this surface, I'll have to use a large file to check it because this protrudes from the center of the surface. And again, very light pressure, rotating it around. Again, I'm not trying to remove a ton of material. I'm just making sure that there are no scars or burrs. So with all that done, you can see there's a very light um, pattern merging here. 
So there is a slight uh, machining error. Uh, you can see that there's a high spot on both sides of these um, surfaces because the shiny spots here and a dark spot here. So I'm just going to do this for a little bit longer just to make this consistent um, all the way around. And then I'll wash it and get to measuring the parts. So now that all the parts are cleaned and deburred, uh, it's time to reassemble the outer ring inner rotor into the housing and start checking clearances. The first area I like to check is the rotor to ring. And I like to check it on all four of these rotors. And yes, I know it does rotate its position as you rotate around. As you can see, the dot move from here to here. Um, but I just start with, with checking all four, um, all four of them. And you need to check them at the peak rotor position. So it's at the peak of this uh, curved surface here. And then I, next thing you need to check is the clearance on the ring to housing. So let's check the rotors first. So if you haven't uh, used a set of feeler blades before, go and check out my video in the upper corner here. I did a whole video explaining how to use feeler blades. So uh, I'm just going to start out by using the 5 thou feeler blade. And I don't just jam it straight in from the top, I actually pull it in from the side. So this one... No, the 5 thousandths won't fit into this rotor. Let's try the 4. Yes, the 4 will fit. So the clearance between this rotor and this part of the ring is 4 thousandths. Let me just spin it and check another one here. This one's uh, 4 thousandths as well. Checking this one. That one's a little bit looser. That might actually be a 5. And it's like four and a half. And then the final rotor. Uh, this one. Yep, it's about five. No, four. Excuse me. Yeah, this is a four. Actually, it might even be a three. Yeah, three. So, between four and three thousandths from the rotor to the ring. Now, let's go ahead and check the ring to housing. And this one, you have to push it in from the top. There's no, no other way of doing it. So the 4,000th uh, feeler blade can can fit in here. Um, so that tells me it's a, it's a 4,000th clearance from the ring to the housing. The final area to measure is the space from the rotor and outer ring to the body housing. To do that, I'll use a depth measurement tool here. So if I set it on the outer housing, we have it set up to read zero. And if I slide it over to read the ring, you'll notice it reads uh, two and a half thousandths lower than the surface. And if we bring it in further, we can see that it reads um, four thousandths. So the inner ring to lid has a four thousandths clearance of it. You know, that's the end float. And the uh, ring to housing is two and a half thousandths clearance. Now that we've done those measurements, I've gone ahead and written them down here on the right. So the end float ideally would be about three thousandths of an inch, and the housing to ring or annulus as it's called was three thousandths of an inch. The housing to the inner rotor was four thousandths of an inch. So I'd like to have that be three thousandths, but in order to fix that, I have to take material off of this ring and the housing. And to do that, you really need to use a lathe, and I don't, I don't have it, so I'm just going to leave it alone for now. This is a good quality pump. It's going to work fine. Um, I just need to make sure that I checked all the measurements and make sure that they were um, within tolerance. If any of these dimensions were, say, six or seven thousandths between the rotor and the ring, or even you know six or seven between the ring and the body, then I would have to start over with another pump because uh, you can't change those dimensions. The only dimension you can change realistically is the end float. And in this case, this pump was pretty much right on where it needed to be. So hopefully you guys appreciated this video, a little glimpse into building engine parts. If you did, let me know in the comments below. If you have any other suggestions or comments on uh, modifying pumps, uh, again, put them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. And best of luck if you are building an engine because it's tedious and slow process, but at the end of the day, um, it'll be worth it if you do all this extra work to ensure that the engine's going to run as well as it can. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.